Hey guys and welcome back for another video. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial. I know it's been so long, um, but today is going to be a super easy one. It is going to be an adorable little boxy pouch. I've made a few of these on my channel, um, but this one is a little different because it is a little poop bag dispenser. So adorable. So as you know, I did get a puppy and he's actually down here causing problems. Um, I mean, maybe you don't know actually, but um, yeah, we got him about uh, three months ago. So he's about five months old now. Um, he's a cute little Australian Shepherd, so I'll stick a picture here. He's so sweet, such a good boy, um, but he does like to poop on his walks, figures, right? It's so funny because Evie, our Labrador, she never did, so I could get away with not having to bring this stuff on the walk, but this little guy, he always seems to find uh, an opportunity. Let me see if I can pick him up. He's getting so big, though. Give me a big... Oh. There he is. Say hi. Yes. Oh, he's such a good boy. Um, so yeah, so I'll have all the measurements over at the blog post, of course, as always. And, um, and I will have a PDF download available over at my Patreon. So if you're not already supporting me over on my Patreon, I do post my, um, all the patterns for free over there. So if you support, then you get access to the PDF patterns for download. So you don't have to go to the blog and deal with all that stuff. Um, so yeah, so let's just get straight into it. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a closer look. These are the two that I made. Um, one has a gold zipper and one has a blue zipper. Um, the difference between these ones is that I actually put an interfacing on all of the pieces. For the one with the blue zipper, um, I didn't do it on the lining of the, the one with the gold zipper. Um, but I do enjoy having the interfacing on all the pieces. So I would definitely recommend if you are going to be using cotton. And um, it's very easy to load up and you can even fit a little bit more stuff in there, maybe some chapstick or whatever. So along with your little roll of bags. This is the hardware that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm not going to be using the D-ring, but it is an idea if you wanted to put a D-ring on one of your loops. I just went ahead and put a split ring on when the bag was fully assembled. And then I have my zipper. Um, these are the grommets that I am using today. Um, they came from the hardware store. Um, but if you didn't want to use something like that, then you could of course use grommets. I'll have links to all of um, all these products down in the description box below. But these tarp grommets are awesome. Um, they're very easy to set also. So if you don't have a snap setter um, for regular grommets, then you can easily use these and then just use a mallet or a hammer to set these into place. And they don't look too bad uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you can get them in different colors though, like black or green. I think I saw them. Um, but they are designed for tarps, but that's okay. I mean, it's very utilitarian, right? That's why we're making these little pouches. Okay, so now I just have all of my pieces cut out. So I have two lining pieces and one outer piece, and then I have one long strip, which will be used for the loops. And I did went ahead and put on some medium weight interfacing off camera. And um, so that's just gonna make the cotton fabric a little bit more rigid. So if you wanted to just use, you know, like a waterproof canvas or a leather or cork, you know, then you can totally omit the interfacing. But because I am using cotton, you want to have more of a rigid bag. So that's why I'm using the interfacing. Um, now I'm just going to work on the little loops that, you know, you have next to your zippers so that it's easy to open and close. So I usually like to just make a long strip and then I'll cut the pieces that I need. So I just went ahead and took that long strip, folded it in half lengthways, and then I opened it back up again and then folded the raw edges into that folded edge. And then I went ahead and pressed that flat. I like to use my Taylor clapper. Um, you don't necessarily need one, but it's nice to put that on after you have ironed it and then it helps it cool down and stay flat. Um, so it's always a fun little thing to use if you can ever get your hands on one. And then I'm just going to go ahead and sew down both sides to make little straps. And I'm using a three stitch length. Um, I like that for my little straps. I think it looks a little bit better. And I'm just doing both sides. So once we're done that, you can go ahead and place that to 
the side and we can start working on the actual boxy pouch. So I'm just going to take the outer fabric and I'll lay that flat on my table with the right sides up and then I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to lay that down on top with the zipper pole facing down. And I'm just going to line up the raw edge, the shortest raw edge of that fabric with the zipper and then I'll place the one piece of the lining fabric on top. And if this lining does have a right or wrong side, just make sure that the fabrics are right sides together. And I'm just going to clip that into place and I'm going to sew that right down the zipper teeth. I am going to switch my machine over to a zipper foot and that's just going to get um, your needle a lot closer to the zipper teeth so you can get a better zipper installation. Um, if you're new to zipper feet or if you've never seen one before or maybe you have one in your stash and you never knew what it was for, I do have a zipper foot explanation video I can link in the corner of this video. Um, it's very handy and I don't think I could not use one. I definitely recommend getting a zipper foot. It helps make your installation of the zipper close to the teeth. If not, then it kind of affects your measurements to have more of the zipper tape exposed, if that makes any sense. So I'm just going to sew down the one side and then I went ahead and opened it up and I folded that lining underneath and then I am going to do a top stitch right along that zipper again. Now normally when I sew I usually stick around a 2.5 stitch length so whenever I do a top stitching I always bump it back up to 3 and then I'll bring it back down to 2.5 when I do the rest of my construction. And sometimes you have to move your little zipper pull out of the way just so you can get a nice straight line so don't hesitate to stop and move that out of the way and this is how it is looking. So now we're going to go ahead and install the other piece of the lining and we're going to fold up the outer fabric so that the raw edge is lined up with the other side of the zipper. We'll flip it over and then we'll place that last piece of lining right on top and then go ahead and pin that or clip that into place. We want to make sure that everything is nicely lined up on the sides just so that the bag, you don't end up having to cut off a part of your bag and then it end up being smaller. And then I'm going to go ahead and just sew that like we did the first time. And I'm going to try to get that zipper pull out of the way. And at this point I ended up just because I do have a zipper by the yard, I don't have a zipper stop on it, so I could pull that zipper pull right off. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew right across the teeth of the zipper, and that's going to just stop my zipper pull from flying off. Um, it's always more difficult to get the zipper pull on once your, you know, your piece is semi-constructed so just put a little zipper stop in there and then I can open it more and then that will help me when I go to do the top stitch on the other side so this part is a little bit finicky if you're using a smaller zipper like I am um, I like to sometimes give myself a little bit more room so I can open the zipper more so that I can do that but it still works out fine so now I am going to open up the zipper and this is how it is looking and we're just going to flip it back inside out and we're going to put our lining pieces right sides together and then we're just going to go ahead and sew the long edge but we're going to be leaving a gap in that and that gap is going to be for turning so we make this bag inside out and then we flip it right sides out when it's all done and this hole is going to be what we use to flip it inside or right side out again so I'm just going to go ahead and do a quarter of an inch seam allowance from the one side, probably do about an inch and a half in, and then stop the machine, make sure you back stitch to lock in those stitches, and then go a little bit further, maybe like a two inch gap, put your presser foot down, lock your stitches, and then go all the way to the end. You always want to lock your stitches 
just so that your stitches are tight and especially because we will be manipulating this fabric um, and we don't want the stitches to come apart okay so this is how it is looking so far and I have my little strap there ready to go. Um, first, we're going to take that zipper pull and move it over. Um, we just want to make sure that the zipper is open a little bit so when we do go to flip it right side out, it's less difficult. So I just put it right in the middle. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the, f the outer fabric, making sure that it is folded evenly and I'm just gonna put a little notch right in that fold and that's just going to sort of find the center of the fabric so that we can center it correctly. Um, the lining you don't need to do because we'll just use that seam as the center. And we're going to flatten the fabric on top of the zipper and those little notches are going to line up right with the zipper teeth. And we flip it upside down and we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to flatten it creating folds on either side and we'll use that seam to line up with the back of the zipper teeth. And then you can clip that all into place. And then we can cut up our little strap and we will place those. So like I said before, I like to make one long piece so that I can easily cut what I need. Um, especially if you're making multiples of these little pouches, it's a lot easier to just make one long one and then cut what you need. So I'm gonna cut two pieces that are about one inch long, um, just enough so that when I fold it in half, it'll be a perfect size for a little loop tab on my little boxy pouch. So after that, I'm just gonna fold both of them in half and then I'm going to go ahead and slip those into the boxy pouch. Um, slip those in right on top of the zipper and make sure that you're putting the loop first and the raw edges out the end. Um, because I make it one inch, I usually have a little bit um, sticking out like this and I just like to have a little bit sticking out um, just to make sure that I catch it when I'm sewing and then I'll just cut off the excess when I'm done. So I do it on both sides and I'll just clip that into place to make sure nothing moves around. And then I'm just going to sew um, down both of the raw edges of the pouch. You might need a heavier needle to get through all the layers of fabric at this part. Um, you know with the tab and the zipper it does get a little bit thick so if you have a leather or a denim needle on hand that would work really well if not just go slow take your time you know even if you need to hand crank it and then go back again um, over top of that tab just to make sure that your stitches are nice and tight um, just because sometimes you do end up skipping stitches if your machine can't quite handle um, that kind of thickness and so I'm just gonna do the other side I do have an entry level sewing machine so it really it handles it quite nicely when you have the uh, stronger needles so you don't need any amazingly strong machine to be able to make this so I'm just going to go ahead and snip off the excess zipper and the excess tabs and then we'll work on creating the corners to make it into a little boxy pouch so I'm going to use a quilting ruler and I'm going to use a marker um, just for demonstration purposes you can use chalk depending on your fabric because I'm using a dark fabric and the interfacing I don't mind um, using a marker you're not going to see it on the outside so I'm just going to make a three quarter of an inch box on all four corners but if you can see um, the three quarters starts at the stitch line so I'm not going to do three quarters from both edges I do three quarter from the one edge and then three quarters from the stitch line. So it looks like it's one inch on the one side. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut those out. And this is the more finicky, finicky part of the tutorial. It's a little bit more difficult when you're making a smaller boxy pouch. Um, it's a lot easier with a larger boxy pouch. So hopefully you can follow along. Um, 
and if not then I highly recommend maybe making a larger boxy pouch in this same way so just up your measurements you know maybe double your measurements just to test it out and then you can do these corners the same way just so that you can get an understanding but basically what I do is I take the one corner that is the outer fabric and I flatten it so that the seam is lined up in the center and then I flip it over and then I do the same thing with the lining of the same notch and I'm just flattening it and then I line up the seam with the center of it and then I take the raw edges of those two notches and then I line them up together this is a lot easier with larger pouches but it can be done with the smaller pouches you just gotta kind of know what you're doing so I'm gonna do it again just so you can see I'm not gonna do all four corners but I will do it again and because I was concentrating so hard on doing it I did kind of fall off the camera so I apologize but I will um, do another close-up shot when I am actually sewing it so just stay tuned and you'll be able to see another vantage point so like I said I take the outer notch flatten it so that that seam is lined up right in the middle and then I'll just clip that first just so that I can have extra fingers and then I flip it over and from that same notch I'm going to do the same thing and flatten that notch you may have done this with other um, box bottom bags or pouches or whatever um, but this is just a little bit of a different technique see sorry I fell off the screen there for a minute and I'm just gonna line up the raw edges and then I do a quarter of an inch seam allowance I'm only doing two of the notches at once and then I'll do the other two at the sewing machine so I'm just I just took the clips off so I just kinda wanted to readjust to make sure that everything is nicely lined up but they're kind of like back to back so I'm just gonna place that under and do that quarter of an inch seam allowance And now I'm going to do the other side. And make sure that everything, the notch on the lining does come out to be a little smaller. So that's why it feels kind of weird, but it still does work out. Did you see patience? <laughs> okay. So I know this part's long, but I really wanted to include it just so that you could really get a good grasp of how to do it. So now we're going to do the other half of the the boxy pouch and it's kind of tucked in on itself so we're just going to kind of um, untuck it and then we will do the other two notches if you want to you know actually make this pouch with me and watch this part and do the exact same time then that also will be very helpful for you And my little mount is making it a little wobbly. <laughs> I'm just going to clip it. And then you need to sort of bring the fabric over top so that you can I don't know how you would call it. You're kind of flattening the notch I guess. But 
but the better you're able to do this then the better your boxy pouch will look on the outside I'm not too concerned about how the lining notch is flattened you know that doesn't bug me as much um, but it is the lining fabric you want to try to make or the outer fabric you really want to try to make it as nicely as possible so that's when the interfacing really helps to um, add that structure so it's easier to do this step And then I'm just going to do the other side. And this is one version of a boxy pouch that, um, does not have any raw edges. So there are other tutorials where um, you can just make the boxiness once everything is all assembled. But I find that I don't really like to see the raw edges. So I'll do anything if possible to prevent any raw edges on the inside of my bag. But um, I can link another version of another technique of making a boxy pouch in the corner of this video and it is just you still have no raw edges but it's just a different way of doing it it's pretty neat all right so now i have all four of my notches all sewn so we're going to go in through that hole that we left in the lining and I'm just going to put my fingers in and try to undo the zipper a little more and then it's going to be inside out for a minute but then you can flip it right sides out So as you can see though, it is beautifully sewn. There's no raw edges. I just love how, um, how it looks. The finished product is so much more nicer. Okay, so after that, well, you're basically done making your pouch. So if you wanted to stop there, um, you could definitely do that. Um, but we are gonna go ahead and place that grommet. So I am gonna put it on the one side um, because this fabric isn't directional or it is directional um, the one side has the words and the words are upside down so I'm just gonna put the grommet on that side and I'm just using an awl to place a hole right in the center and then I'll use some scissors and just kind of make the hole bigger and cut out some of the fabric and just like a regular grommet you have the male and the female end so we're just going to place the male end through the inside of the hole and then we can place the female side on top on the outside and then I'm just going to use my little mallet and hammer, hammer, <laughs> hammer that into place and then that is pretty much it. Then you can put your a uh, split ring on your little loopy and then you can attach it to you know your keychain or your doggy leash and you have a little dispenser for on the go and I think it turned out adorable uh, perfect little gift for you know a pet owner in your life or if you want to sell these you know you're more than welcome to so thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed I hope you subscribe and of course hit that like button, share it with all of your friends, go over to the blog post and you know put it on your Pinterest boards and show it to all your friends. Um, but yes, all the measurements will be located over at the blog post. If you made it this far, if you did, then drop an emoji in the comments below because I would love to see who stuck it out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.